What is going on, everybody? Hope you are having a good week so far. Today on the podcast, got the one and only Ollie Norton. Ollie is a good friend of mine. Obviously, we've just released a record together called Place I Belong with his Unreal Vocals on. The video is out now as well, so you can go check that out. Um, yeah, he's an amazing dude, great singer, great songwriter. Um, check him out on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever you want to kind of listen on. Um, go follow him, Ollie Norton Music. And yeah, we had a great conversation. It's just a pretty much two mates having a good catch up, really. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, Ollie Norton. And we are live. Mr. Ollie Norton, how's it going, sir? Uh, very well, mate. How you doing? Pretty good. It's uh, it's Monday morning and I've got that Monday morning feeling. I don't know about you. Um, yeah, no, I feel your pain. But the sun is shining. The, it's just there. the sun is shining yeah. and it's beautiful outside. Um, and I'm excited to see what this week brings. <laughs> um, but yeah, how's things, man? How's life? Yeah, good. It kind of feels like everything's slowly getting back to normal, a bit of normality, you know, but... But yeah, no, things are good. Yeah, I feel like it's it's getting back to normal, but also we're still so far away from being yeah. back to normal. It's kind of like that, like teasing you, teasing you with the tip. Mm -hmm. It's just about to come, but yeah. like <laughs> exactly, exactly. Not getting the full girth. No. <laughs> far, far from the full girth. <laughs> but we can hope. Yeah, man. We can hope. I'm feeling optimistic today. Mm. I feel like each day is a little bit different. Like one day I'm very optimistic and positive about it. And then the next it's like, oh my God, this is fucking downer. Yeah, we're, we're doomed basically. <laughs> but I'm feeling optimistic today. Have you been writing much? Um, yeah, it comes in spurts. Yeah. So like when the lockdown first started, um, I was being really creative and writing a lot. I think it was just the the freedom of everything slowing down, you know, mm. like everyone was in the same boat. Yeah. And um, I think, yeah, I found that quite freeing really. So I was writing a hell of a lot at the start and then it kind of slowly dropped off. I think that's when I was at my most, um, I was in a quite weird place in the lockdown when I wasn't really writing. Yeah. I think that was probably what was helping me through it, like most creatives, I mm. guess. But, but yeah. But yeah, I've got loads of songs ready. It's just finishing them, as uh, people know. But. Did, did you, uh, did you, did the laptop kind of come out good with all the records that you lost? Um, oh, yeah, of course, because my hard drive broke. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like the good. worst nightmare ever. Yeah, it wasn't great. But for me, because I released that kind of EP of the lost demo tapes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was either the end of last year or the start of this year. I can't really remember. But it was good for me to just get them song. It was quite freeing, really. I knew I wasn't going to get the projects back. Yeah. Um, so what did you do? Did you just release them? I, yeah, I had bounces. Okay. Of um, each of the tracks. And most of them were made in a day. I was, I was in the mindset of just wanting to get mm. things out. So I was just writing and producing the song in a day. And at the end, luckily, that it does, doesn't normally happen for me like that as well. So it's quite lucky that they sounded how they did. And then just sent them to my mate to get them mastered. Yeah. And they turned out all right. I think I'm getting to the point now where I've sat on them for a bit and I listen to them. There's a, there's a few things where I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> change that, you know, but I like what they are, you yeah. know, so I'm glad they come out. But I think at the end of the day, it's just releasing music is strange, isn't it? And I don't, it might be different for you because you're kind of like singer songwriter. Yeah. Where you can like really get, your story point across to what you're trying to get out or whether it's your feelings or something like that but it's like it's almost like a time stamp of where you were at in your life exactly yeah and it's like i i wish we could do that with dance music because I, I don't feel like i can really mm -hmm. i feel like your sound changes um and like evolves and kind of things like that but i think like the great thing about being able to write songs is you're like you can just talk about whatever you're feeling do you do you write yeah. about what you're feeling or do you write about shit that are uh, just random shit most of the time it is even if it's like subliminal like things mm -hmm. that are in the back of my head 
like um, a week or days down the line or something like that, I'll think, ah, oh, that means that, you know, yeah. or like it always kind of comes for full circle, you know. But yeah, with house music, I guess it's just not as blatant. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of emotion in the music and stuff. It's just not like words, is it? It's not like, but. Um, yeah, I think I think it's how you also like when you're writing it, it's like, what are you writing it for? Like, what does the memory like what does this kind of sound remind you of and like what are you kind of trying to capture out of yeah. it? Are you writing this record for someone? Are you doing, if you know what I mean, like no one needs to know that it's written for someone, but yeah. it's kind of like, are you writing it for a moment that you had with someone or are you writing it for like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's very different to like, I think it is very different to singer songwriting. I just did like a, a bunch of, um, a bunch of, uh, days in the studio in London with some people and it was just like with a with a load of singer songwriters and they're just it's just so different how you kind of write a pop song compared to a dance record and yeah. when you're in with like pop writers and and we're trying you're trying to write a, a dance record that's like doesn't sound cheesy and doesn't sound like a like you're trying to be really commercial when you're trying to sell records yeah. but like trying to keep it cool and simple it's like well there's quite a lot of complex complexity in in pop music because it's just very structural it's very formulaic you kind yeah. of have to stick by it where dance music is very well is it? even like with place i belong mm -hmm. like there isn't really any structure to the vocals it's just like mm -hmm. It's just a verse, isn't it, really? Or a chorus is, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, I think the whole kind of arrangement of that track's pretty crazy as well. Just the breakdown and then the new synths come in and stuff like that. It's just a bit all over. I think that's why it works. It's just a bit all it's like a journey, isn't it? Yeah. Can you remember when we wrote that? I like I remember I remember the day pretty clearly. Because yeah. we we only did it in a day, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, it was quick. Yeah, I can't. I just couldn't get over because we had a discussion of like when did we write it. Mm. Remember when we were just, you were going through obviously your folders yeah. and like going through 2020, going through 2019. It was like surely it can't be 2018. <laughs> and that's what it was, wasn't it? Yeah, we wrote it at the end of. Was it summer? No, it was the end of 2018. Oh uh, right, okay. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, because yeah. then I went back to the project 20 January 2019 and finished it. Right, right before the tour, I think. But no, I th I think it, I think I finished it before then, right. But I remember I'd just come back from a sh from a tour, yeah. And we, I think we actually like vibed an idea like beforehand because we had the record nineteen ninety, didn't we? Yeah, I remember because you sent me the song for that one. Yeah, and um, I remember sending you a little clip. And I think, oh, like let's get in the studio. Mm. Get into the studio after that, and then yeah, place I belong time. I think, yeah, the, kind of just we had. kind of was just easy, wasn't it? Mm, We've yeah. got a lot of music together, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we need to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Would you? Uh, are, are you planning on like doing an album or anything, or does an album appeal to you? Um, it does, and I think definitely after just kind of. Um, like with the last little project I did, just getting songs and piecing them together and mm. seeing how they, you know, how you can create a full project. But I think at the moment, I'm still in the, I'm always making different kinds of music and still not really fully knowing where I'm at musically. So I think I'm just going to release songs and, um, yeah, just see what catches on and see what I fall in love with and what I want to do, I guess. And being involved with this song with you as well has kind of taught me a lot about, I don't know, preparing, mm. I guess. I kind of want to um, make sure I'm doing it right rather than just putting a song out and seeing what happens. I think I'm yeah. at a point now where I will kind of, you know. I think, I think there's like two cool. sides of it, isn't it? Because there's something so artistic about just like just putting it out to the world and just letting the yeah. world have it. But then there kind of comes a point where it's like the business side of it, where you're like, well, now it actually needs to like make money. And we, I want as many people as possible to, to hear this record and kind of yeah. move forward with that. And I think it's a, like a horrible, it is shit because 
you're like when you love a record and you don't get anyone to buy it or stream it or watch it on YouTube or whatever it is, like it's really yeah. tough to kind of like win that battle over where you're like, I need, I lo- I want people to listen to this. I need to make money out of this record. But then there's also that, like does the artist actually care, the artist in you actually care or is it just the businessman inside you that kind of doesn't want to, that, that it does care and it's that, that battle of just like, who wins <laughs> the artist yeah, or, or exactly. the businessman yeah because i know yeah. i know I've, i know i spoke to you for, for loads and like when you hadn't uh released music and it was kind of like that sc- kind of scary thought of releasing music of like once it's out it's out yeah 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 yeah, yeah it's funny because I've, I've kind of gone through different stages of that so before i released the song it was like you said i was like you know freaking out it's going to be out and then I released that song and then after that I was like, oh my god, I just don't get anything out, all my demos, get them out, you know. <laughs> I just wanted to release all my music, but um yeah, it comes in stages, I guess, of confidence and loving songs. Cause you, like with our song, you're sat on a song for so long. Yeah. And um Yeah, you I go think- through you go through phases, don't you? Like where yeah. you I don't know about you, but I've like got records that got my next not my next release my release my release in uh in june like i went through so much where i'm like is this too commercial but i absolutely love this record is this like is it right for me to put out and it's like that constant like battle with do i love it yes one day i love it the next day i don't like it and i think it's like what do you get that with your records yeah yeah, all the time. And I think definitely <laughs> lyric, lyrically for me as well. Yeah. I think, uh, like one minute, when I'm writing a song, I think, and I'll think I love it. And then a few weeks down the line, I'm like, oh, no, nah, I can't listen to myself say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's like one of them ones. But yeah, no, I feel your pain. I think it's just as an artist, any creative, everyone just goes through that battle, don't they? Just one minute loving it and then not. But. Yeah, just wanting to quit. It's the highs and lows of being an artist, right? Just, yeah. Oh, man. So many times you just wake up and you're like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, that is it. How do you find it, like, working, like, a, a day job and also being an artist as well and trying to kind of have that balance of, like, being, uh, doing, doing writing and still like having to pay bills and shit like that um yeah not great really obviously i work away quite a lot as yeah. well so it's like five days out of the studio and then when i get back on a friday as much as i want to be in the studio now the sun's shining and yeah. people are tending to go to the pub and stuff like that so <laughs> but um yeah it, it's it's just one of them you've got to try and find the times when you can um but I, i'm trying to i think i'm going to go part-time in the next few months mm. just kind of um focus on getting some songs ready because i haven't got any music ready yeah to release afterwards but. Do, do you write on a, on the road um yeah but i'm not i can't with whatever i write on headphones mm. and i think I, it's amazing i get back in the studio and i think like <laughs> it's crazy you know how much different it sounds yeah i'm the same i, I, I tried to I try to. I can write like edits on the road. Like if I'm going mm. to like a club and I'm like, okay, I want to do an edit of, I don't know, whatever record. I, yeah. can, I can do that. Um, but starting a whole record and finishing it, I'm just like, sound, always sounds terrible. It's always yeah. like forced. Um, Are there any songs that you've released that you like started in a hotel? Mm. You know, like any of your, or like on the road, you know, like. So my remix of uh, Percolator, Green Velvet, Percolator, I wrote that on a plane. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Um, But it's like, it's a pretty simple record. Yeah. Like the remix is really simple. Um, I've done quite a lot of edits on on a plane that like are in my tracks, in in my sets. I don't know. I don't think there's like an original record that I've... I know that my record Mukaj, or it's not Mukaj, it's Muchai, 
but um, everyone would call it Mukash. Um, I wrote that on a train going to a festival. Um, actually, my Adam Bay remix of Your Mind I wrote on a train as well. Oh, wow. But I don't know. I did like three versions of that. So I don't know if I actually wrote that version on a train. Yeah. Because I did like a drum and bass version. It started on the move. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think think it's like nice to do a bit of idea, kind of chucking a few ideas together. Um, Yeah. But I don't know. I just find planes and trains and cars just not very creative spaces really you yeah. can't, can't really get into the it's a nice idea isn't it oh it's a lovely idea like yeah. imagine like flying over wherever and you're like writing a record and you can like look out the window not that i'm in a window man i like the aisle side but um you can just like just write records it'd be great but i, I don't know i don't think i don't think i think you need to be in like a vibe for to write a record i don't know i could be wrong i know there's like ed sheeran just like writes albums on tour buses and stuff like yeah. that yeah it's funny i watched the video of him and um benny benny blanco that's it yeah mm. that justin bieber song they wrote yeah. on the on the tour bus yeah have you it's seen the billy eilish documentary yet no i still need to watch it oh man it's great yeah i cried like four times <laughs> i was gonna say you're pretty moved by it weren't you yeah but i think yeah i probably will as well i've seen a few clips but it's crazy how you know anyone has to go through all that so mm. young and she's well mega talented as well yeah really. they recorded the bond theme in a in a bus which is wild like right after she did a show and you're right. just like jesus christ like it's just another life I think there's so yeah. much pressure. Like, there's there's barely any pressure on our careers, right? Like, mm-hmm. the only pressure we do is the only pressure that's on our careers is what we put on, on ourselves, ourselves yeah. which is pretty hard. But imagine being like that. You like you're literally paying so many people's wages when you're at that level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't imagine what it's like, especially for like an eighteen year old. Yeah, yeah. God, I can't even think what I was doing at 18. Like, exactly. I know, it wasn't that. No. <laughs> yeah. Trying to pull birds in the in the club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, failing yeah. miserably. That's it. That's it. Mighty vision. That's what it was, mate. Vision. Were you Legendary working vision. were you working uh were you working behind the bar then? Um I don't know, probably. I think I think that's the first thing I did when I left school was mm. like working bars and clubs and stuff like that so for anybody listening vision is a <laughs> nightclub in western Supermare. <laughs> <laughs> that's like it's no longer thank god um but it was pretty awful it was but it was i was telling you the story the other day wasn't i where we first met DJ set. yeah i don't think we actually spoke oh, it, didn't was the we? First, it was the first dj set i'd ever did and um i was kind of freaking out anyway <laughs> And I think this was the the kind of like big booty year for, for you, you know. I think that okay. song had just come out. 2000, were, 2014. Yeah, it would have been around then, I think. I, uh, maybe, I was maybe a few years after that. I can't think. I'm terrible with time. Okay. But yeah, anyway, I'm kind of playing and thinking, right, I'm getting into it now. Nerves are set. And then you just kind of walk in. I was just like, <laughs> it was mad. I don't know why I was there. Was it because it was Jason? Um, yeah, Jason played as well. Jason played. Yeah, I I tried to avoid that place like the plague. Um, yeah, but kind of Jason always like anybody not that doesn't know Jason is uh, also a good mate of of mine and and Ollie's um, mm. from like local area. But yeah, he he fucking loved that place. <laughs> it was like Marmite. He 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 literally was like resident the whole time it was open (laughs) and then he got sacked because he wouldn't play grime (laughs) yeah yeah it was very he was on you about what music you were playing at the right times yeah i remember house night actually sorry i'm surprised he did he was doing house nights and stuff like that because he was very like r&b yeah you know like 
Western's mainstream. not really at the forefront of um of club music as well, is it? Let's be no. honest. It's, it's an interesting place for uh it is, yeah. for dance. Well, I guess you, I think the thing is is well it, back in a day it used to be like all hard house. I don't know if you know that, but like there was literally just so many hard house raves in in Western. Really? Yeah. C- I, can you? Because the record shop that I used to buy my records from, a place called Spin Central. Did right. you, can, you, can you remember that? I don't know if you, I don't know if you were about then, but there's a, there used to be a record shop called Spin Central, and that's where I met Sam Devine at. Um, right. She used to sell vinyl there, and I used to buy my records from her. But the other guys, Kickback Gary, his name was. Um, and I can't remember the other guy. They were all like proper hard house lads. And they, right. there'd be so many hard house events in, in Western and then like drum and bass events. Southwest just like of the UK just love like really hard music. Yeah. But really. What, what venues? What? I don't know. Hence, I don't know where out. they were. It's like a hard house event at the Playhouse. Like, you just kind of. <laughs> it's kind of uh, yeah, they'd always just like pop up in like little pubs and stuff. Yeah. Um, let's be honest nobody wants to go to a hard house event apart from about 200 people but yeah yeah Sorry. but then again the thing is i guess you were so close to bristol is that most people just rave in bristol yeah it's funny that, that like you know bristol is so like iconic for that and so close you'd think it would kind of yeah. branch out a little bit do you but... think they're like actually many people that say they're from bristol are actually from bristol yeah, I think I'm I'm one of them people. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's like, like I I don't know. Like Porter's Head, people say they're from Bristol, but they were from Porter's Head. Yeah, <laughs> which isn't is Bristol. Red <laughs> right on the tin. Yeah. Um, I don't know about Massive Attack if they were actually from Bristol. I think they were. I don't know. But it's it's just an iconic city, isn't it? I guess it's like. It's the only big city in the southwest that's got a culture scene. Really. Yeah, Bath is pretty weak. Yeah, it's different, isn't it? Completely. It's just like, yeah, Bath is strange because it's the nightlife is awful. Yeah, they don't have many places open past. I think it's like eleven o'clock yeah. or midnight. Or something like that. I could be wrong. I've only been at like a couple of times, but when I did go, everyone was just kind of like, "Yeah, you'll want to be getting the last train home because." <laughs> It's all, you know, it all finishes, but... I wonder what it, that's about. Yeah. So weird. So weird. What's uh, what's the plan for the rest of the year, man? Um, I think I'm just going to bask in the place I belong, Glory, for as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Be scared to release another song. Where are we at? We're at 90,000 streams, I think. Mm. We should Which, be at 100 by the end of today. Yeah, that's just mental for me. That's that's like quadrupled any song I've had in a week. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but, but I want your song. I want your other songs to do well, man, because I don't want Place I Belong to be like at the top of your Spotify for the rest of like <laughs> or for the rest of the year. I want like your records to kind of like push through and like push it out of the way. Yeah, same. <laughs> Big time. Yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, I'm feeling good about the music I'm writing at the moment. Um, it's just I'm terrible with finishing music. Yeah. Um, so I just need to, you know, get a few more songs finished. And just, yeah, come back a little bit differently, I think. A bit more... Um, what do you want to do? What's, what's the, like, the Ollie Norton vision? Where Ollie would you want to be? Norton. What would you um, want to be doing? What type of stuff? Like, who would you want to be working with, et cetera, et cetera? Who would I want to be working with? Um... I kind of want to be an artist that does just work in all kind of, I want to have my, you know, writing the music I do now, the kind of, well, I never know how to describe it, but the poppy, hip poppy, you know. Singer songwriter, isn't it? It's singer songwriter like kind of, stuff, yeah. It's, I wouldn't, the thing is, I wouldn't say your voice is like classic singer songwriter, but you kind of fit in that genre. Yeah. I think where I listen to so much music and I'm so heavily influenced by whatever mm. I'm listening to at that time, I'll be like, oh my God, that's that's what I want to do. <laughs> like everyone does, yeah. you know. What um, are you listening to at the moment? What am I listening to? Um, have you heard of Brockhampton? Yeah. They've just released a new album. Um, yeah, I've been listening to that uh, on repeat quite a lot. 
Um, what else? Have you heard the new London Grammar record? I was going to mention that. I haven't. I haven't listened to it yet, but I've seen it. You're <sighs> you're a big fan, aren't you, dude? I'm a big fan of work. They could literally just put out a silent track and I'd still be a big fan. Yeah, but it's yeah. like, just listen to that intro track as loud as you possibly can. Right. It's f- unfucking believable I can imagine. I can imagine. It's me- she is mesmerizing. She's like her voice. Yeah. Man. And they've got like an amazing string or orchestra on the like intro. And you're like, oh, wow. They've like upped. Like the thing I like about what they've done is like each album is like I wouldn't necessarily say better. Yeah. I wouldn't say there's one album that's better than the other, but it's like definitely progressed, which is nice because considering their sound is quite like chilled and laid back, they're they they are progressing, but it's not like so far away from what they started out as. Yeah. Which I really like. Yeah, I think that's the um, problem a lot of artists have, isn't it? Like with their diehard fans. You know, yeah. When they come away from their like beginning sound. But yeah, no, I'll have to check it out. I've always been a fan of their music. And the dance remix- remixes of their songs are always... Yeah, still fucking haven't done one. <sighs> yeah, that's surprising because you're uh, you know, a big fan. Well, I did do one. And then the record... I did one years ago for Oh Woman, Oh Man. And... They the label didn't want to put it out, right. so fuckers, <laughs> motherfuckers. I want to do one, but I I'm kind of also at the point where it's like, I just love them as as a band and what they do. So I'm like, I don't have to do one. It doesn't no. it's not going to like change my life. It's not going to change their life. If you know what I mean. Yeah, just, just got to enjoy it, innit? Exactly. Enjoy it, innit? <laughs> innit? Yeah. Oh mate, the summer's gonna be good this year. I've got a feeling. Yeah, got a feeling, right. man. Optimism's back. Looking yeah, out the good. window, and I'm like, yeah, let's fucking do this. But I know. it's just live music. I just can't. I need need it back in my life, as yeah. we all do. But I yeah. see you've got a you've got a show at the end of the year, haven't you? Is it Chicago? Yeah, I got a show. I got a festival in. Pennsylvania, which is like near New York. Right. And also a show in Chicago. I just had a book in for Leeds as well in the UK. Oh, nice. Um and I think that's it at the moment. They're slowly coming in. Yeah. Slowly. But we're not really rushing back. Just kind of I don't want to like go to like America and tour in like one or two places and nowhere else can rave i'm like yeah. i'd rather the whole country be able to rave and kind of i don't want to like just shove it in people's faces really that like one place we're allowed to rave and the next place we're not it just doesn't feel like right yeah um i know what you mean i think even even promoting music and saying any it's quite a weird territory isn't it because mm. obviously we're, we're in a pandemic and there's crazy things going on left right and center yeah it's weird but, it's really weird things does feel weird does feel strange isn't it yeah and there's also that other side of it the kind of like selfish side of it it's like well we've been in this for like over a year we need to fucking crack on yeah um, oh yeah and like so many people are just like suffering out of it it's fucking it's weird mate this this is literally like kids are going to be taught this in their history lessons in like uh, yeah. 50 this years time big... it's madness but we've got out of it pretty good considering this is kind of the worst thing that's happened in history since world war Two. yeah so it's, we're, yeah we got out lucky <laughs> yeah we got yeah, out exactly. lucky um, yeah, but I, I don't know what's next, really, man. I don't know. We need to write some more music. We should go away to a, a studio and just, like, write. Mm, definitely, I'm down. That um, analog. Devon analog. We could go down there. Yeah, man. It's, it's a crazy synth collection. Oh, man. Tristan down there. I really want to get him on the podcast, and he keeps on swerving it, motherfucker. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just, like, yeah, the, the synth collection there is amazing. It was really nice to go in London and just like write with other people. Mm-hmm. I haven't written a, as you can tell, my studio is like a right mess. Yeah, I was going to say your speakers aren't normally there. No. Um, 
So th- <laughs> this whole desk is going. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'm getting a stand here for my synths. Um, and the the big speakers are getting linked up again. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I'm just, I, I bought like a few things in the studio. So I bought like a MIDI, MIDI kind of sync box that I can, so I can sync everything up. So yeah. I can like build a, a project out of it, uh, Logic. I nearly said Ableton then. Um, mm-hmm. And then just like go, oh, here's, I want to, I want my Moog. So let's put the Moog on. I want this, I want that. Yeah, everything is just accessible. Switch of a button. Literally, like yeah. What are you doing at the moment? Pulling cables out and. Well, I had decorators in my house, so it, it all got decorated. So I brought it all down. I like unplugged everything and kind of put it all, all over my house and in my parents' house. Um, but it's just like cables and suitcases and synths like everywhere. Mm. Like I don't have a kitchen table right now. It's all just covered in synths which is annoying and the stands were supposed to cut i bought the stands on this website and they were like yeah you'll get them within two to six days and then they messaged me like a week later i didn't have them and i messaged them was like what's going on with the stands (laughs) yeah and they were like oh yeah you won't get them till the 30th of april and i'm like what bit of a difference yeah and then i bought a um bought like a studio monitor kind of controller like almost like a big knob um but not i bought a drama and uh they did the same thing like their website said it was in stock and i was like when's it coming and they were like oh we don't have any at the moment so we've got to find out from the manufacturer and i'm like what the and it's the same with the midi thing and i'm just like but no two different two different two different sites and I'm just like, no wonder Amazon just like takes over everything because they're just so good at getting it to you when you want it or when you need it. Like yeah. before Amazon, we used to have to wait like ages <laughs> to get things. And now Amazon's kind of created this amazing convenience that you get it the next day and now waiting for something. Is... Day, but I ordered something in the morning. Really? Once, and it came the same day. I can believe it. It's madness. That's because you live in a town, isn't it? It's because you live in a town. You can get that. Yeah, maybe. That's amazing. Have you been to an Amazon shop yet? No. So they do like Amazon grocery stores and like supermarkets where they're more like corner shops where you go in, you scan your barcode, which is on your Amazon app, and then you literally just take stuff off the shelves and walk out. You don't even like pay for it no it's way ridiculous they've got one in london but i went to one in san francisco and it just like yeah it's technology crazy. it's mad dude like proper mad so, what, so you go in <laughs> you, you you just take an items you just scan it on like a qr code kind of thing yeah so you so you you walk into the shop and it's got like you know like when you go into like the underground and you've got the like the like gates that you have to scan your ticket in and and you, yeah. it kind of opens up and you go through it's got similar things to that to that so you scan your like qr code and you go through and then you literally just go and pick anything you want put it in your bag put it in your whatever and just leave <laughs> <laughs> that's mental that's crazy. like you don't even have to scan the item you just i i don't know how it works i really don't know how it works it's mental but it's just like, how good would that be? Not having to queue up for a checkout. I well, know. In future. Yeah, it makes you think, yeah, what, what it's going to evolve into. You know, if all this is happening now, it wouldn't mm. be long until like everything is like it, I guess. Yeah, it's going to. It's just getting crazy now, isn't it? So many people are not going to have jobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the AI computers, is just gonna be doing everything. The computers are just going to take over, man. It's fucking. Yeah, like yeah, uh, robot or something. Yeah, do you reckon it will ever get to that point where like um, the world is just like overtaken? Not overtaken, but like everything is robotic. Like if even like Teslas now, you don't have to drive the Tesla. You just like put where you're going and it drives for you. Does it really? I didn't yeah. know that. It's wild. I was, I was, um, 
driving. Where was I driving? I was driving from London the other day, and I drove past a Tesla, and there was two people in. It was so weird. There was two people in there. <laughs> With his hands, his legs up. You know, you know when you know when like someone's eating and driving. They've got like their hand on the wheel, and they're like putting something in and then putting it down and like just kind of being a bit sensible. This dude was literally can in one hand, sandwich in the other hand, no hands on the steering wheel, talking to whoever it was whilst eating. I was like, this is ridiculous that you can do this. But yeah, they, they drive themselves. Well, they turn. Surely it's like just like an autopilot. It doesn't, it doesn't turn and stuff as well, does it? It does everything. That's madness. If there's white lines on the road, it, I, it, I th- I'm pretty sure that's how it does it. So it kind of, yeah. If there's traffic lights, if there's everything, it just does everything. You don't even have to... Like, it, just go to sleep. Yeah. And it would just take that. There's like videos on YouTube of like people being asleep in their Tesla whilst <laughs> it's going. I don't, I think that's pretty <laughs> illegal, but it's yeah. definitely happened. So yeah, things like that definitely make me think that <laughs> robots are going to take over the world. What's, what's your thoughts on robots making music? I heard something crazy the other day and yeah, it was like, wow, this is pretty good. Um, I've, it's one of the big companies are already kind of doing it, aren't they? Or um, coming up with ways to, yeah, for robots building music. It's all... Yeah. I don't really know much about it, to be honest. But what what was your? I was listening to Joe Rogan the other day, and he like they were like playing some remakes that a computer had made for of like Amy Winehouse. So what they did, I think they put like, I think I think somebody had put MIDI chords in, and then the the AI had picked out all of. Um, Amy Winehouse's like words that she's ever sang and then put them together to make a new song. Mental. And you're just like, and it sounded pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Scary, isn't it? We're all doomed. (laughs) We're all fucked, mate. (laughs) (laughs) But then you're like, no one can someone recreate like feel like, yeah, like, the, or like the, the the like what like if let's just like generic you're writing about a breakup no one's ever experienced you at that feeling like no like although everyone can relate to that experience and that feeling yeah no one has felt what you felt ever because yeah. it's, it's your feelings mm-hmm. so can ai capture that feeling no i don't think so i don't think so we're, I was thinking like maybe statistically like they'd pull up all the hit songs and find like you know yeah. like what a match and then just be able to you know the formula like I the guess. formula yeah goes yeah. back to that formulaic but yeah what you're saying about like emotion and yeah I don't think so what's what's your thoughts with music at the moment like I, I've been talk, thinking about this a lot because I'm like there's no real like rock bands going on at the moment like the, I know there's lots of rock bands out there and if you're in a rock band and listening, I'm sorry. But there's no, like, Kings of Leon. There's no Arctic yeah. Monkeys. It kind of feels like we need one. Yeah, definitely. What's your yeah. thoughts on, like, the music scape at the moment in time? Like, because when, yeah. when you listen to the radio, I'm like, this, this I sound like my fucking parents, like, yeah. back in the day. Yeah. It doesn't feel like anything. There was just that legendary era of music, mm. wasn't there? In, in all of it, hip hop, mm. R and B, rock, Oasis, and things like that. Yeah. Like now, I can't. Well, I don't know. You've got your Billie Eilishes and all the the pop stars, I guess. But I can't really pinpoint, like you said, like any like proper rock band or anything like that. No, it's like almost like gone under. That like rock's just not cool anymore. Hmm. There needs to be one though, but I don't know. I don't know if the market will allow it to happen. I, I just don't know because I think the way we listen to music is very different nowadays. Like I know there's people that release only on TikTok. 
Really? They release on TikTok and, well, I don't know them, but I've heard of them. They release on TikTok or like Triller before yeah. anything else just to kind of get into the like 12, 12 to 15 year old kind of camp. Yeah. I think it's going to be... Full so- the full songs? Mm. There's a way to listen. I thought it was just... Oh, no, I think it's just yeah. clips. I think it's right. just clips. But I think what you do is you run it through a distributor so the full song goes on there and then they get to choose which part of the song they put on their video. I see. Um, you know, like when you're doing a story on Instagram and you can kind of put music to it. it yeah. It's, and then you choose what part of the song. Right. Um yeah, I think, I don't know. I heard Spotify were initially doing it. I could be wrong, though. But uh, I heard with, like, ambient music, because um, it does so well on Spotify. I heard that Spotify were trying to make an AI that would make it, make ambient music so they didn't have to, like, pay the artist. And they would just, no like, way. put all of their own playlists as, like, chill-out music, and it would just all be Spotify AI music. Think I think they failed though. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's really weird. Would you ever want to be in a band? Um, yeah. So I've got a few mates that are in bands, and um, it does seem cool. You know, I've always wanted to have like a group of people that just you know I can make music with and mm. have fun and do whatever. But I think there's a lot behind the scenes that you don't see. You don't see uh, a lot of, uh, you know, arguing and stuff like that. A but I think that most of all, it's pretty fun. It's egos, isn't it? Yeah. It's the thing. Yeah. And I think that's like, let's say, for instance, like Coldplay, how they, how Chris Martin did it. That is his name, isn't it? Chris Martin. Chris Martin, yeah. How he like splits everything equally. So there's not like one songwriter that just makes all the money compared to there's like like oasis say for instance like no yeah, is coming yeah Noel's getting that check Noel's making i i i know google's not always right but i google like Noel's worth like 65 million and liam's worth like 7.5 million really <laughs> and you're like wow there's let's be honest they're both okay and they're both doing very well yeah um but there's something about that where you're just like I don't know. When you're in a band, you kind of got to look after each everyone, and then I feel yeah. I feel like there'd be much more longevity in it all. I'm but, surprised with the Chris Martin actually that they. I don't know why, because he's quite a nice bloke, but he gets quite a lot of stick, doesn't he, Chris Martin? I think he gets a bit of stick for just being a bit of a like. I don't know, a bit of a lemon. Yeah, <laughs> but he seems yeah, a nice guy. Yeah, great songwriter. Great songwriter. Great songs. And he's like not technically the best singer in the world, but he's like is a great performer. Yeah. As well. I've seen them live at Glastonbury actually. Mm. He just pretty, like knows pretty. how to work a crowd, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was magic. It was mental. Everyone Where, had the lights on mm, their on their wrists. Yeah. Was, yeah, it was a, and who else was there? Adele. Oh, she man. Adele and, that was crazy. Yeah, I bet she was amazing. The contrast between her speaking in between <laughs> singing. Because it's just, it's so funny. Like, it's the whole, it's the whole package. And then she'll just sing the most, you know, beautiful song ever. Everyone's yeah. crying. And then two minutes later, she's like, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, you know, what makes her her is great. But. Yeah, it's amazing. Especially being, like, because I don't think any other culture will kind of understand like where they're where she's from and like how yeah. she talks and how it's different to like what mm-hmm. you expect. But it's just funny and being English, isn't it? And like hearing her accent and knowing like she, where she's from and like, but then sings the fucking most amazing songs ever. Yeah, she's had a ins- like. Imagine having a career like that. Yeah. Her first album was, was it 21 or 19? I Nin- can't think. 19, 21 and 24, wasn't it? Yeah. And some of the songs, she like they're just amazing. I don't know how anyone can even think like that when they're that age. Yeah. Yeah. You... She's, she, she did amazing. <laughs> just trying yeah. to think. Like I think there was a statistic that every household in the UK had a copy of her album. That's really? how many albums she sold. Yeah. 
like unbelievable. I don't know anyone that doesn't like their music. No. And if they do, I don't trust them. Yeah. Yeah. It's not right. Like, how can you not? Like, exactly. everyone's cried to an Adele record at some point in their life. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Facts. Facts. And if you haven't, you're a pussy. I'm worried about you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. What are you doing the rest of the day, man? You got a um, day off. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I've got the uh, push two. I'm probably gonna have a play on that. Oh, mate, do you like bacon sandwiches? Do I like bacon sandwiches? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, this is a very random, like, <laughs> move away from what we were just talking about. Um, no, on. I'm interested. There's I'm this interested. place in Bristol called Wilson's Bakery. Um, we need to go. I've seen the picture actually. It's fucking unbelievable. Yeah, it looked mental. What well, sauce uh, was that? It was like a brownie, brownie barbecue, sriracha kind of sauce. Yeah, it looked make pretty it. mad. Um, let's go. Um, I don't know when they're open because I went there the other day and they were closed. <laughs> so oh. shit. Drove where to Bristol. I, where is it? Uh, just off White Ladies Road. Right. In Bristol. Um, yeah, when it's open, we need to make it happen. Let's go. Let's go. You make me want bacon now. Sorry? You kind of made me want a bacon sandwich. But yeah. I Domino's for breakfast. Yeah, you text me this morning. Going. Yeah. I would get up, but I'm eating pizza in bed. <laughs> <laughs> What's rock and roll come to, mate? I know, I know. Not, no hangovers, no women, just pizza. Just pizza. <laughs> Co- what is going on? COVID lockdown. That's what it is, mate. I hope so. That's my. Ex- that's the excuse. That's, that's the excuses we will make. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was at the gym this morning. I I put a new blackout blind in my bedroom and my days is amazing. Like not a single bit of light goes through my bedroom yeah. now. It's so nice. I can sleep. Do you like... find waking up later though? Well, this today was the first time that I had it. Uh, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I woke up at like four in the four thirty in the morning for an hour and was like, I have to go back to sleep. And then I woke up like two minutes before my alarm went off this morning. But I, do you set an alarm? Um, yeah, I'm pretty bad. Because sometimes I have to be up at like five in the morning and stuff yeah. like that. So I set it for like 4.59. Yeah. And just kind of roll out of bed. But, <laughs> um, I have to do like a morning ritual. I can't just like roll out of bed. I wish I could. I like have to like get up and either train or shower and like just compose myself for the day. Yeah, it is definitely the better way to do it. When I say <laughs> I, I can't do it, but I do do it, I, if that makes sense. I'm not very good at it. I roll out of bed and I'm in the worst mood and I can't speak going on for about 20 minutes. But yeah, I wish I had a bit of a morning ritual and could wake up and do things, make a coffee, but I don't. I wish I liked coffee. Yeah, it's good. It's I really good. wish I liked it. Oh man, we should do something this week. Let's do it. Are you off a week? Um, I'm not sure because I am supposed to go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. It's in Oxford, and um, they're already there. <laughs> so I might just take it upon myself to have the week off. But... Um, I leave maybe Wednesday. We could do something. Yeah, let's do I'm, it. I'm getting a haircut first time in like. Since December the twenty third, how's it looking? May is wild. I'm not that. Yeah, it's like. I don't know if you get to see. But I... Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm just gonna shave it all off. What fully? Yeah, bald. Bold. Do it, mate. I reckon it'll suit you. Well, no one really and sees beard. it anyway. Beard and head. I'm keeping the beard. The beard staying. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Don't shave your beard off. That would be. <laughs> It's Even the beard is like really fucking long at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's mental. It's like, yeah, it's really long. Anybody that's listening, I just put my beard over my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think you could, could you reckon you could tie it around your head. The beard? <laughs> yeah. Nearly. Yeah, it's, um, it's nearly, yeah. It's pretty, man. um, pretty wild. I can grow a mustache. <laughs> yeah, you just go out in the wind and it blows off. Literally. You've got a good head of hair though, man. Yeah. The mullet yeah. is there as well, isn't it? 
mullet is in full force. Are you going to grow I've, it I've, out? I've, I've got attached to it now. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to cut it. Yeah, just keep growing it out. They, we've got a family friend who moved to New Zealand, like, I think about a year and a half ago. No, two years ago. And he's just, like, gone full-on Australian mullet, and it's awful. Like, <laughs> it's fucking awful. Saw him on Instagram the other day and was like, I don't know what it is over in Australia. I don't think it's really a New Zealand thing. I thought it, it must be because he's over there. But mm. a lot of Australians have mullets. And I'm like, yeah. do, you, do you think you look good? Because you really don't. <laughs> I had a friend that went over there and did the exact same thing as yeah. the mullet, but his did look quite cool actually. But it is funny how everyone goes over there and it's just like, I'm just free, you know, <laughs> let my hair grow. I'm free to look like an absolute dickhead. <laughs> uh, I was, I met I was a mate, brilliant. I met a mate from in London the other day and uh, that I used to work with in Ibiza and we were talking about the Ibiza fashion back then and how right. like, everyone wore the, can you remember that, that advert the 118 advert yeah with those yeah, like white vest. yeah white vest and the tiny running shorts yeah everyone in ibiza was wearing those when the yeah years. the little shorts yeah, and the, the shorts. um the shit shirts as well yeah, wasn't it? exactly and you're just like it's so funny how fashion people think they're cool by like being in fashion but they're just like it's just like copying everyone in situations mm. like that you're just wearing what everyone else is wearing which is not actually that cool yeah no you're right but i have to i must say did, i think i did go through that phase did you have a pair of those shorts you I definitely did you thought. definitely did i don't know if i had the shorts <laughs> but the shit shirts i'd still wear them now actually shit shirts are still cool is that what they're called shit shirts i, I don't know they're, they're like hawaiian -y old shitty shirts aren't they really yeah yes yeah, they're cool but uh, now the shorts I don't think I did like the nylon. I know what you mean. Like the yeah, no, I didn't. No, I've got a pair because I I did a fancy dress party as, and I went as the one one eight. Okay, fancy dress. But I don't fucking. I've never worn them out in public. Mm. But when was your first year in Ibiza? Two thousand and my first time going to Ibiza was two thousand and six. Right. My first. I did like a month and a half 2007 and 2008 was my first full year and then right. my last one was 2020 i think right i see well did you play there in 2020 2008 sorry no 2008 i sorry i'm my brain is ticking 2008 i was resident at uh orange corner 2009 i was resident at orange corner halfway through 2009 i went to kenya as resident 2010 i was resident at kenya and that was it jeez it was a few years on the trot though yeah yeah, not many compared to some though, but I realized I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here to make a career out of music. Yeah. Like there's, you don't make a career in music in Ibiza as being a, being a resident. You just, just a lot of partying and, uh, well, it was just a lot of working. You're just playing for like 12 hours a day. And I also had another job recording DJ sets for like a production company. So we'd, we'd record DJ sets So every Sunday we would do, uh, we love space um so we'd, do, we'd be in the club for like it was open for 24 hours um and we'd be there for like 12 hours of that just recording dj sets and then we would do cream every thursday night as well um so yeah it was just like i didn't do any partying i got when i used to drink then and I would drink twice a summer and once at the beginning and once at the end. Just really? Yeah, I was working like 18-hour, 20-hour days, seven days a week. That would make me want to drink more. <laughs> Just didn't have time. <laughs> didn't have time because yeah. I had my car over there as well, so I was driving everywhere. Right. Um, but, yeah, it was just like nonstop all the time.
Is that how you got into like? How did you get into making dance music or being into it? Like, um, it or... no, nah, I I got into it when I was like nine, right. and then I did like a thing. I did like an academy course called the DJ Academy when I was twelve slash thirteen. Mental. Um, in Bristol, and uh, it's now Slug and Lettuce, but it used to be called Fiesta Havana. It's like every Monday night. There was like probably about 30 of us. We'd go and they'd have like, they'd have, you'd you'd be split into like groups and one was like the advanced, one was like medium and then one was like complete beginners, like never touch decks. And Mm -hmm. I was in like complete beginners. Um, And it wasn't just learning how to DJ. It was like learning how to promote, learning how to book DJs, learning how to like, design flyers it was just kind of like a bit of the whole package um yeah, of like being cool. yeah being a dj back then it's very different now of course but um yeah. it wasn't social media then or, or anything it was and it was still vinyl there wasn't cdjs at all then i don't think um and then around that time i saw faithless live as well and I was like, crazy. I was like, that's what I need to do. And went to, engine. yeah, mm-hmm. went to, um, went to college, did music technology and then moved to Ibiza in the summers during college. And yeah, it was like, I should probably do this, but I didn't really take it seriously until I was like, 18 uh, maybe even longer than that because i thought i was writing music at like 14 but i didn't have a fucking clue what i was doing yeah and then even at 18 producing you had mm, the software and stuff yeah i had cubase um but i didn't have a clue what i was doing like not one bit um and then 18 when I was in Ibiza, I had like a little studio in my bedroom and like probably wrote one record all summer. Yeah. And then when I'd left Ibiza, I was like, I need to really like, I need to make something of this. Um, so that was like early twenties. I would have thought I would have started to take it, take producing proper serious. Yeah. Um, and then that took, probably four years of just like i remember splitting up with my ex and being like okay i have to just lock myself away for a year and just work and like not have any distractions like no girlfriends no like going out like literally just like solid in the studio every single night because i was still working full time then as well yeah um and just do everything I needed to do to be able to like tour really mm-hmm. just constantly. Um, yeah. yeah. And then kind of big booty came out 2004, I believe. No, 2004, 2014. Yeah. I remember, I remember that when that came out, just a video, it went kind of viral, didn't it? Was it MK playing it or something like that? Jamie Jones. Yeah. Jamie Jones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember that just kind of being everywhere. I think that was Facebook when Facebook was kind of yeah one, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's mad. I remember, like, I remember the girl who posted it and and makes it there. But um, yeah, it was like <laughs> you think you're you think you're gonna make it from there, don't you? Like when like one person plays your record, and you're like, oh shit, I'm gonna be yeah. famous, and then you very quickly realize you're not going to be <laughs> yeah i think so what, was that your first did you have anything with dirty bird or anything by then or was that literally that kind of put you up there didn't it yeah that like, came out on worthy's at label anabetic and right. like everyone was playing that mk was playing that um jamie was playing it seth troxler was playing it eats everything was playing it and that was like when they were like the shit obviously they're yeah, still the yeah. shit now but they were like the new kid new kids on the block just like destroying everything yeah um but yeah then after that i had my first release on i actually th- yeah first release on dirty bird 2015 
And then I had like three EPs on Dirty Bird that year, 2015. Yeah. And the rest is history. Mm, the rest is history. And now we just released Place I Belong. That's it. Go check it out on your local download store. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what do you think of the video? What do you think of the video? Amazing. Really cool, yeah. I think before, um, like when I was just kind of reading the story, Mm. it kind of, you know, I felt uh, I was into it then. And then, yeah, obviously seeing it come to life. Yeah. I think everyone did an amazing job. It's really great. Yes, I haven't even, like, checked out how well it's doing. Have you? I haven't seen it. No. I've been at a bit of a... Let me uh, pull it up now. If uh, anyone's uh, hasn't watched it, you can go watch the video on uh, YouTube. Place I belong. We broke the internet. No, we didn't break the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. We don't. We don't need to break the internet. It's out there. Yeah, exactly. It's what it's about. It's what it's about. Yes. Uh, I do love this video. It's great. It's really good. Yeah, it's great. I think it's hey, that last shot with the flower on the last drop. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I just realised I boozed up the uh, the uh, the link for it as well <laughs> in the uh, in the the comments. I boozed up the link massively. I need to change that. Oh, change that when I come off. Oh, I'm sure no one's clicked it. <laughs> That's one of them. Yeah, man. Right, dude, we've just done an hour. Um, let's wrap this motherfucker up. Thanks for coming on. How can people follow you on social media and all of that? Um, Ollie Norton Music on Instagram and Facebook or on Spotify at Ollie Norton. Um, yeah. They're go, my main f- ones. go follow him, people. Um, dude, big love. Thank you so much for being on the record. Um, And I'm sure I'll see you later on in the week. (laughs) Yeah, man, definitely. Thanks for having me on. Take care, man. See you soon, man. And that is a wrap. Loved it. Hope you did. Please share it. Please subscribe. Please do all of the good bits if you want. If you don't want to, then don't bother. Um, See you next time, people. Keep safe.